we live in, there is some difficult times. It reminds me of what happened back in the 60s. See, the 60s was a decade that changed the entire United States of America because of a movement. It was called the Civil Rights Movement. It was a time where this nation was saying, wait a minute, does it really matter what you look like? It was a time where people protested rights that were denied them that were supposedly guaranteed by the Constitution. It was a time of unrest civilly in this country. The reason that I bring this up is because it appears that today we, history is repeating itself. There is a very, very tragic situation that happened in Ferguson. It was equally tragic a situation that happened in Chicago. <coughs> Another situation happened in San Francisco. The list goes on and on. It appears history is repeating itself. Not that we are upset about the same thing, but we're affected by the same ignorance. Because it comes down to ignorance. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the reason that I say this on this day is because it brings us to why we have communion. What is it that we are really supposed to remember? What is it that Jesus Christ told the disciples? Why did he say remember? See, it's important because if we focus on the world, the worldliness that's going on, then you lose focus on our purpose for being here. That's so important. Because it's easy to get caught up emotionally with I'm right and he's wrong. It's easy to get caught up on what's legal and what's illegal. It's really easy for you to come even in the church and look around and say they don't understand. It's easy to do that. But what is even more difficult to do is to look at the same brother or same sister and say, despite all, I still love you. It becomes difficult to do that. But we are commanded to do that. We are commanded to understand why it's so important that we take time out to remember why we are here. What is it that we are supposed to be doing? Who is it that we really represent? Whose sons and daughters are we? When you look at it that way, you understand that in love, nobody is different than anybody else. In soul saving, no one, no soul is more valuable or less valuable than someone else's. We're all exactly the same. We all have a soul. We all are souls. And we all have souls that are here to serve each other in love one to the other. Amen. There is no difference. Nobody is more valuable than someone else. This is the first reason why we must remember this day. Now when I say this day, I mean the day of remembrance. When Jesus Christ told his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed and served the first communion, that we would remember this day, one of the reasons why it's so important to remember is what happened in the Garden of Eden. You see, in the Garden of Eden, it was a time where we were in communion with God, direct communion with God. We talked to Him. We walked with Him. But something happened. Something happened that caused us to be separated from God. What is that that caused us to be separated from God, church? Sin. It was sin. Now here's the question. What was the sin that caused us to be separated? It was unbelief. It was disobedience. It was all of those things. Wrapped up in one. Let's turn to the book of Genesis. I want to show you something very quickly. The book of Genesis. Just, let's look at chapter number three. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Genesis chapter 3. Verse number 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, 
Yea, have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, nor shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now we understand what was the sin. It was not so much that we were disobedient to God. It was not so much that we didn't trust God. What does it say in the next line? Or the next two lines? I'll read verse number four. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, that's one, that it was pleasant to the eye, that's two, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, that's three, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So we see in that verse that the first sin was when we didn't trust God and the woman said that it was good, she saw the tree was good for food. So the desire of the flesh, the desire to have it something for me, the desire of the flesh, it is something that is still plaguing in the church today that was created back then when we were selfish and looking out for ourselves. Then the next one, and it, is, and it was pleasant to the eye. How easily can we be deceived by what we see? Even in the church. Because the devil can show you anything. What did he show Jesus Christ on the mountain? When he said that you can have all of this if you bow down and worship me. He showed him everything. He even showed him me and you. Because he saw all the works. The desire to work with something that you see can deceive you. The Bible says we walk by what? By faith and not by, by sight. That's important. Understanding what this day of remembrance is all about. And then it says, the tree the desire to make one wise. Now this is one that is a, the total deception. Because when we talk about making one wise, a desire to make one wise, to learn something that God didn't reveal to you, to understand something that wasn't shown or is not shown in Scripture. Some of us are doing this today even in the church because we're not going by the Word of God. We're not understanding what the Word says. We're going beyond the Word of God. We want to learn something that God did not show us. See, this desire to learn something or to understand something that is not revealed to you is a desire of evil. And this is where it came from. And while if we look at today, all of the things that are going on in our world today that are evil, that we are focusing on, that we are concentrating on, we are losing focus on the day we're supposed to remember. We're not supposed to be looking at what's wrong or what's evil. We're supposed to be looking in love one to the other. Because what the world is lacking is love one to the other. If we talk about vision, we should see Christ. We should see Jesus. If Jesus is in everyone, that we should love everyone, then we should see Jesus in everyone. Whatever the result is, doesn't matter. It doesn't change the love of God that is inside everyone that he created. This is the barrier that separates how we love each other. Do not look beyond the barrier at what's on the outside. Do not look beyond the barrier at how a person reacts or responds to the love you're showing them. We are not commanded to be loved, we are commanded to love. This is important in understanding what this day is all about. It is important in understanding that when you take upon the cup, the blood, the cup represents the blood. The blood is sacred. The Bible makes it clear that the blood is sacred, the blood of Christ. 
that was shed for the remission of sins. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. So when we think about the cup, and we think about the new covenant, because this is what it represents, that means that it's not your blood, but it is his blood that is shed for you. This is the covenant, the, the new covenant that God made with man. And the bread, what is the bread? It represents the broken body. What is the bread today? The bread is the word of God. When the Bible says we should eat this, what does that mean? How do you eat the word? We should be studying. It should become part of us. It should flow out of us. When you speak, you should be speaking the word of God. If you're eating it and it's inside you, then it will come out. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? It speaks. So when we take upon the bread, we understand that it's the word of God that we are taking. This is why it's so important to take all of it. When he said, eat all of it. It was not symbolic. It is something for you to understand that we are to take all of the word. Some of us, even today in the church, take part of it. Take two-thirds of it. But we don't take all of it. We don't abide by all of it. A simple way to explain that is to understand how one can have a problem with somebody even in the church and have a problem forgiving Because we're not accepting all of it. You want to know how to forgive your brother? Love God that's in your brother. Love God that's in your sister. And you will never have a problem with it. That does not mean we don't have differences. It doesn't mean that we don't have conflicts. It doesn't mean that I have to agree with my brother. It doesn't mean that. It means that we love him. When I talk to my brother or when I talk to my sister, the first thing I see is the love of God. Because this is what the purpose of the church is. This is the gospel that we should be spreading. How do we love each other? Despite what's going on today. Despite what you've done to me. How do I love you? See, when we go out there and we show by example how we love each other, that's the example of how other people should love each other. That's why we do it by example. That's how it's walking by faith. Not by sight. Because if we walk by sight, everybody in here will be against each other. If it was by sight, there's no way I could stand up here. There's no way we can be about the Father's business if it was walking by sight. But if it's walking by faith, everybody's welcome. If it's walking by faith, everybody is in need. If it's walking by faith, then your need becomes my need. Because I love you that much. Because he first loved us. So when the Bible says to examine yourself before we take communion, it's important to examine yourself. And here's what I want to make sure is clear when we talk about examining yourself. When the Bible says examine yourself, or not, I don't want everybody to stop thinking of everything you've ever done wrong that you haven't confessed. That's not what the Bible's talking about. The Bible says there's no condemnation that those who are in Christ Jesus. No one should be in here feeling guilty about anything. That's not what examine yourself means. What examine yourself means is do you accept the blood of Christ personally for the remission of your sins? Do you accept the bread of life, the Bible, the entire Bible. Do you accept it? If you accept it, then you personally are cleansed. We come to the altar with clean hands. Don't come to the altar with aught against your brother, with aught against your sister. You come to the altar with clean hands because you accept the blood of Christ as a remission of your sins. You accept the bread of life which is the word of God. This is when we examine ourselves. This is what it means. It is just a matter of yes or no. If you accept the blood of Christ, if you accept the bread, which is the word of God, then you may, take the, uh, part, you may partake in communion. If you do not accept it, then I'm not mad at you. Don't take communion. 
Because a covenant is something that is for or against God. This is why it says in the Bible, do not take unworthy. If you do not accept his blood, if you do not accept his bread, which is word, then you should not take it. It's better not to take it than to take it and not do it. It's better not to take it. No one here is going to judge you if you don't take it. I'd rather, like I said, that you didn't if you don't believe it. But if you do believe it, if you do accept his blood, if you do accept his word, then this is a celebration. Amen. This is an adulation. This is when we should be hugging each other and loving each other and better than we did last week. Amen. Because the, when the word of God came through and became flesh and dwelt among us, for what purpose? For the purpose of saving each and every one of us and reconciling us back to him. In spirit and in truth. This is what, it, this is what it, the purpose of it is. And in, in reconciling back to God should be a joy to every one of us. Because you know what it means? It means that we are no longer held hostage by the burdens of sin. We are no longer held captive by the burden of sin. We are no longer held responsible for the damage of sin. We will personally be held responsible for every sin that we've done we have not confessed and put on the blood of the Lamb. And today, each one of us can put our sins at the altar and have them thrown as far as the east is from the west. Who wants they sin thrown that far? I don't want them to bring up anything I've done. Because if he did, y'all would be stoning me. You would. But understand, by his blood, we are cleansed. Everybody is cleansed that accepts his blood. Everybody has clean hands. This is another reason why we shouldn't have aught with each other. Because your brother is innocent. He's not guilty of anything. Because the price has already been paid. So it's a joy to come to church when we have communion. It's a joy to accept the blood for the remission of all sins. It is a joy to accept the word. Every part of the word. It is a joy. So we are celebrating today. See, you know what the problem is in some churches when they only do this once a year? It's ridiculous to me how we, the Bible says as often as we do this. Now, some people have took that to mean, well, that means we can do it once a year. It's what we call Easter. When they say they celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How is that a contradiction in the Bible? When he said, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. What does communion mean to them if they're celebrating communion once a year? It sounds confusing, which it is. A proper application of the Bible says we should be doing this regularly. Not annually. We should be doing it regularly. And we should understand its purpose and its meaning. So what I want y'all to do is we're going to have a moment of silence. I'm going to pray silently. While I pray silently, every man and woman in here, examine your own heart. Examine yourself, and you decide whether or not you accept the blood of Christ for the remission of your sin. Every sin you've ever committed, you decide whether you accept the bread of life, which is the word, all of it. If you don't accept all of it, there's no need in accepting any of it. Now what we're going to do is all of the females will be into the room in the other building. All of the males will go in the room back here. When you come back into the church, would you please sit in every other row so that you can be served? Does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody understand it? Yes. We're starting with the back pew. We're starting with the, yeah, starting with the back pew. I don't want to sit in the front. Starting with the back pew because the front rows has to be empty. Everybody understand that? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have a moment of silence. I'm going to pray silently. And when you take the time of prayer, see, here's why we pray. The Bible is clear that consecration happens before the communion. And in the Bible, when, the, when, the, when they consecrate themselves, that means they examine themselves. They sat and pray. I didn't really talk about foot washing, but foot washing is a, a, an act of humility. 
it is very important that we understand, since we're all clean, and since nobody has out against anyone, then it shouldn't be a problem to wash anyone's feet. We don't demand that anyone do it. If you don't want to participate in it, that's okay. But understand his purpose. Humility is the core foundation of Christianity. And that means that when we, are, when we perform acts of humility, it is for our sake more than the other person. Because we have to be willing to serve everyone. If you can love everyone, then you can serve everyone. That's what it's about. Does everybody understand that? So, I'm going to pray. And when I'm finished praying, I will dismiss us for communion. Everybody understand that? So we have a moment of silence. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we ask Amen. to bless this time. Amen. You are dismissed.